Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay and welcome to Inside the Hem where we dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This month I'm bringing you 30 days of festive fashion sewing where each day I'm sharing a new garment sewing project to inspire your holiday wardrobe. No matter your personal style or your budget, join me as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. Let's dive into today's festive project, a car coat. If you have never heard of a car coat before, let's look into our fashion history books for a quick lesson. Originally designed for automobile drivers and passengers in the early 1900s, car coats were long and often fur-lined to provide warmth and coverage. Car coats are shorter than overcoats, usually ending at mid-thigh, and are trimmer than a full-length overcoat, but longer than a pea coat. Car coats are single-breasted and aim for a clean, uncluttered look. When I saw the cocktail dress I featured in yesterday's video, I already loved its clean, chic design. But when I saw that it had a matching coat, I was in love. Something about the bold fabric and the sleek silhouette of the dress paired with the oversized fit of the jacket just spoke to me. So let's dive into how we can make our own car coat to go with the dress from yesterday. All right. Here is the combo, the one thing that we are all searching for in this video. It's just so good. This is a floral print, oversized, point collar, three-quarter sleeve, side pocket car coat. So lots of details right there in the um, product title. And then if we scroll down, we can see it's brocade, textured fabric, vintage inspired silhouette, oversized point collar, three quarter sleeves, pockets, double snap closure at neck, lined, um, polyester outer, I'm assuming it's saying, and then a cotton lining, hand wash, blah, 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 to launder it. Bow toes, we have the front. Here is the back. Okay, the back is very, very, very good. Again, we have this oversized um, shawl collar kind of thing. This one has gathers in the back, and then you can see the sleeves are elbow length and very wide. The back also does have a center back seam, but I don't think there's a vent or anything there, just um, hemmed normally. Here is someone <laughs> wearing this outfit in front of their private jet because obviously... I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Here is someone in front of, I don't know, some kind of village. Wait, is, wait, is that pants? What is this underneath pants outfit? I didn't even see that available on the website. My goodness. So good. Here we are. Is this all the same woman? Um, here she is in her, like, New York City loft, you know? with the exposed brick. Like, it's the lifestyle, okay? This is what we need to all channel whenever we're thinking about making this coat. Going to the lighter color one. Let's see if we can notice anything else here. That's the front. That's the back. Here it is from farther away. So we have this cutie. I mean, look at the shape. Just look at the shape. I'm obsessed. Just so, so, so obsessed with this. Um, here she is wearing it without her arms on the inside. If you want to be like a real cool girly, that's how you pull this off. This feels like a dressing room. So maybe she took these in a dressing room somewhere, some boutique or something. Oh, she belted the coat and rolled up the sleeves. I'm not so sure. I love that. Oh, this is the dress. Oh my gosh, this is the dress unbuttoned up the back, turned around and made into a vest. Now this woman knows how to get her cost per wear down, right? Here's this one. Oh my God, it's just so perfect in so many ways. Okay, last one. Here's the green one. Again, we have the front. We have the back. We have some lifestyle photos. Oh, this one we can see the lining. So this is the cotton lining they speak of. I'm more partial to polyester linings with a polyester fabric outer, but you do you. Here she is holding it 
and that's all we're going to get from this one. Okay, so you guys get the idea for this coat, right? This is the pattern, Vogue 42, I'm sorry, 4052. Pretty good, right? I know, I know, I'm pretty proud of myself too. Okay, so this is a very loose fitting line jacket, has notched collar, uh, drop shoulders, welt pockets, and sleeve bands, but starting first with the neckline. So the neckline of our inspiration looks like this. It's a pointed collar rather than having a notch. So in order to change this out, you would have to um, kind of like redraw this the the straight seam here up 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 and then add it on. I kind of think this looks a little bit more expensive. It certainly is a little bit more difficult to make. Um, I don't know. The collar, I think, looks still really chic and looks like it kind of belongs. Um, it doesn't look out of place. And maybe if we hadn't seen the other one, we wouldn't even be considering anything about this, this collar, right? So I'm inclined to leave the collar. They've also done a contrast here, but our inspiration does not have a contrast. It's all the same. I kind of love that. I kind of love that it's all one. I kind of like that there's no contrast at all. Okay, and then welt pockets, okay? Welt pockets are challenging. I'm thinking they're side seam pockets. I'm thinking they are not welt pockets simply because in these photos, we don't see a welt. We don't really see a gap or an opening for a side seam pocket either, but knowing fast fashion, I think it's safe to assume it's a side seam pocket. And because it's lined, that's fine. It's gonna hang out in between the exterior and the lining anyways. But yeah, I think it's in here somewhere, right? So you could take this coat, do not cut into your fabric and make the welt pockets. Okay, and then the cuffs. So the other thing about this pattern that's different from our inspo is that these sleeves are longer and it does have the contrast cuff. So what I would recommend is just leaving the cuff off and then you would have that short elbow length sleeve that more matches our inspiration. The collar in the back is perfect. Actually, there's no center back seam. So that's another big difference between ready to wear and then making patterns at home because ready to wear, they wanna save as much of this fabric as possible. They don't want to have to cut something on the fold if they don't have to. So this actually makes it cheaper for them to make. Um, which actually reminds me that ours does not have this yoke with the gathers either. It's still very, very full though. Can you see? So I'm not too worried about that. Um, it's very hard to see where the sleeves are because of the um, because of the collar. I think they're set in. I think they're right there set in. So not as much of a drop shoulder either. Ours comes down to here. So a few differences, but again, I think if we weren't like literally swapping back and forth between the two of them, you would not be able to tell these two things apart. Okay, so envelope time. We are looking at fabrics like brocade, damask, denim, and wool blends. Um, unlike the other videos where I'm like, you can consider all of these other fabrics. This pattern really, really needs to be made out of a fabric that is very structured. The weight of it doesn't matter too much, um, but it needs to be crisp and structured to hold this shape. You'll need some lightweight fusible. And then... Do we have any notions? Maybe no notions? Hold on, let me make sure I'm reading that right. Yeah, I guess so, no notions. Interesting. Um, so the jacket is for the largest size, which does go up to a size 26, is two and five eighths of a yard of fabric, plus the contrast pieces one and three eighths. If you're leaving off the sleeve bands, maybe you can go down to one yard and you would be fine. So it would be like three and a half yards, call it, that you would need for the whole jacket. You need about three yards for the lining and then four yards of interfacing. They're recommending lightweight fusible. All right. 
And then just to review yesterday's fabrics, we have the rose, the roses in all these colors. This is the border print because inspired by the blue version, you can see how it's a bit of a border print, how this is very full through here and then you start to see more and more blue as it goes up. So if you're doing a border print and you wanna copy the jackets sort of motif, it looks like they did it like you normally would for the body of the jacket. And then the collar looks like it was cut from whatever end of the fabric has the most filled in. But yeah, this is the border print for that option. I'm so sorry about these pictures are really hard to work with sometimes, but that's the border print. Look how big it is. That's the six inch ruler. So really, really big flowers. Perfect for our oversized jacket. And then here's the pricey one. <laughs> um, it's from Anna Sui. Those are the three fabrics that I recommended for the dresses yesterday. Again, brocade is a dime a dozen. You can find a ton of brocades and a ton of different prints and a ton of different colors. So just go with what you love, go with what fits in your price point. Um, it will be exceptional. Worn with an updo to help that neckline shine and either a clean line pump or a sleep booty would complete your holiday look. If you wanted to add the big bow at the high center back of the dress that I suggested yesterday, this coat probably wouldn't sit well or be comfortable since the collar is so big. These two garments are meant to be worn together for the whole night. This is not a coat check situation. Thanks for joining me for today's festive project. I hope recreating this brocade car coat sparks some inspiration for your holiday sewing. It is a super simple pattern with a dramatic effect that will have you shining this holiday season. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we will be creating metallic pants. I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 days of festive fashion. Happy sewing. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.